Woodley on the beat. Because I mean, you're, it has its pros and cons. Having the physical asset can be sometimes a little bit more liquid. Right. Like actually owning a house rather than owning a real estate investment trust. Right. 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 Yes. So the difference can be in terms of liquidity and so on. But you, it, it, it really matters what you are looking for at the end of the day as an investor. Right. Because some people pretend not to, pre, not pretend, but people prefer, sorry not to have the actual tangible asset. They prefer not to deal with that because with the tangible asset can come fees like a lot of responsibilities. Right. You know, you're going to have to change your roof at this period. You're going to have to do plumbing. You have to deal with sometimes shoddy um, rental people. Tenants. Tenants, sorry. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it can be a little bit agitating for people like that. And some people don't want the hands-on approach. So, right. you can actually just say you know what i want to invest in a high yielding real right you know and these some of these are offered by the brokerage houses and so on the returns may be a little bit low right however it's a really, it's it can be a little bit more stable for the investor who wants nothing to deal with right you know so, the physical asset and the headaches that can come with it right but also the physical asset in turn if it if all goes well and so on can be a little bit more lucrative so while the read can be you know a more long term you know, the physical asset, if you model it in such a good way, that per se, and you are lucky enough not to have any much issues, it can be a little bit more lucrative. But at the same time, it matters on market swings and matters what is the investor's idea of the, how he sees himself as an investor. Right, right, right. So it, it matters on your risk tolerance and what you want to take on at the end of the day. Because as I said, technology is improving so well and the world of investing is an ever-changing schematic and people are really now looking into having less physical assets right, right, right. so I mean it all depends but having a physical real estate right now in the whole schematic of things is still very powerful so balance is important because balance is important why it needs us for next question because next question, next question would be you know how important is that balance that balance between physical and intangible assets. Is it a must that we have to have physical assets that attain a certain amount of wealth? Or do we rely solely on intangibles moving towards the future? Because based on how we're looking right now, you know, intangibles are taking up more of our portfolios. You understand? So yeah. is it that we are moving away from the tangible assets and going to intangible? Or do we need to strike that balance? Well, balance would be perfect. One could say that intangible assets, because we see how the real estate market is now. I mean, for certain years, we look at Kingston 6, Kingston 8. Wow, who would want to own a rock in like Kingston 6? Right. Because these houses are going for like $80 million above. Like 80 million sounds a bit conservative for some of these areas. And so, I mean, it all matters on your capital level your risk tolerance itself and how much you understand the business. Right. Because just going out and say I'll purchase real estate, it sounds easy, but there's a lot of different intricacies behind it. You'll have to pay lawyer fees, you'll have to look at the GCT fees, transfer tax and all of that. So you have to more understand what you're getting yourself into. Right. And but it can be a little bit more lucrative because the, the regular real, real estate investment trusts are certain other instruments of that sort can be a little bit slow moving. But let's say I inherited a house in Kingston 6, you know, right then and there. I mean, I would take that any day over the, <laughs> day, the money to just buy it. Yeah. 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 I could continuously be renting this house of course. for five years and I'm just sure that, hey, listen, I never put anything in this. Thing. Right. right, you know, so everything getting out is. So if I rent it for five years and sell it after that five, I'm still in so much positive. Right. Right. So right. Right. the intangible asset can really be good but we know that in terms of expenses right. it can be almost out of reach for the regular right. youth right. you know while a real estate investment trust can be just a hundred dollars per unit right. 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 so striking that balance is very important you know so learning what to understand what you are able to manage as a person and 
how much you're able to leverage at the end of the day is very important to strike in that balance. Right. You know, looking at instruments that would fit your bill to what you want to get into. So, okay, I understand. So as we relates to educating yourself, I know that you must read books. Yeah, definitely, definitely. There are young individuals listening to this podcast right now. You know, old not old sure of, you know, how to be old as well. Yeah, old, yeah. old, big up the elders. <laughs> 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 you get me? You know, the way how the Jamaican society is set up, you know, they're not sure of where to go for information on these things, you know, what books to read, you know, and this will aid in whether or not, or how soon we can get started on investing. What are some materials that you suggest? That these young individuals can read that would aid in them protecting themselves mm-hmm. more and progressing into investing. Well, you could look at Grant Cardone times 10. Uncle G. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he, he is good with real estate. If you want a good insight of real estate, you can look at Grant. Also, mm-hmm. Kiyosaki. Robert, Robert. Yeah, yeah, Kiyosaki. I mean, everybody is supposed to hear about Rich Dad Poor Dad. I mean, that book gives you almost the realest insight on what the world is today and how some, for some, for the most part, right. what we're educated on in terms of the fundamentals that we're growing can be really wrong, right. you know, and <laughs> to help to keep us in touch with reality, right. to understand certain things. But, I mean, for the most part, those books aren't really going to give you the exact step-to-step on how simple, on simple rules of, um, understanding finance. Right, right. However, I use articles to understand finance. Those books actually made me more grounded. Right, right. You right. know, as a person. So, like your first grounded. steps going into investing. Yeah, because I was I was nowhere near the financial scene. <laughs> I Same. just um, happened to fall into it, right. and these were books that I had picked up after I used to read articles and so on to understand certain things about basic finances. Right. Maybe Molly can tell you more about various finance, financial, educational books, right? I mean, for me, I found the raw books that t- teach you the facts. Right. Of yeah, the, the world, yeah, the, the truth. truth. Right. The world is not, okay, get up, you know, get a job, you're all right. No, right. that's what Rich Dad Poor Dad is saying, right? Yeah. And Grant, he taught me about the, the, the real estate market, understanding certain stuff about how to go around taxes, not borrowing. <laughs> 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 but how to be more efficient. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't want to spread it in your life. <laughs> Alright, so let's, 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 let's go back to the, the physical and the intangible um, assets question. You know, a lot of people are more reserved because they have more responsibilities. You know, you know in your mid 40s to 50s, you tend to take less risks because, as, you say, as I said before, you have more responsibilities. Now, for those even young young persons that uh, honestly I don't even really, I don't really like saving mm-hmm. the saving thing. I like when that money works for me. You understand? Right, right, right. But some people like the safety. Some people like to be conservative security. You understand? So as there is investment options for like a safe net, like a two percent or you know three percent. Can you give us a, some some options as it relates to investment products that can can give um, people clarity and give people safety, that safe feeling on their money. Alright, so let me set out a disclaimer first. <laughs> Once you invest in, there's nothing, there's nothing called 100% safety. Right. Nothing is 100% safe. A lot of people felt safe before this COVID. And <laughs> that yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Some That's people true. still have the belief that a job is safe. Yeah. This COVID is supposed to teach you that a job is that safe. Right. Right. So, but I mean, lower risk. Yeah, lower risk. risk. Yeah. What I would say is, other than your savings, you can look into money market accounts. Right. Um, money markets is basically like 30 day investments. You can go to 90, 30 to 90 day investments where the yields are low. Some of the brokerage houses offer them. They usually do government um, paper, paper bonds. Right. Some yeah, of them treasury bills. Right, right. You know, so Notes. those are quick turnover. However, the yields usually can be like 0.2% per annum or so, which is really, it's, it's really low, but they can be really safe. Right. 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 So those can be an option. Also, I spoke about real estate investment. 
interest, right, right. those can be really low. And even if stocks and stock market that time, we start from real estate. But stocks can be a bit more risky. can be a little bit more wild and risky, but those are usually the lower in risk type stocks, right. real estate stocks. So you can look at certain stocks like Epley, Caribbean Fund. Right. Uh, bonds itself, both corporate corporate bonds mm -hmm. and um, government bonds. Government bonds. So yeah. yeah, so bonds in itself is a low risk instrument. What happens is that basically you're lending either a company or a government money, and they are going to pay you back a certain amount every year. So you know what I'm Oh, it's long term. Yeah, it's long term. It's long term. Right. Long term. Long -term. Yeah. So that's the thing. If you're looking at a low risk instrument, more than that is going to be a longer term. Right. Because short term, or like trading and everything, that you know what? You're not fine. But then you have some people that want the safety but don't want to wait. Like, hold, oh, hold. Oh, you can't. No, you have to. Read that, that's the thing. Or the thing about that. No, no, you have to. Like, boy, I said, what me to do? Why no, not? I can't. No, no. When I when I hear that sometimes, because I, I it's clear I'm not up. I'm not up. I don't know. Advice. Advice. Mm -hmm. You understand? But I'm saying there's no way you can look at me and ask me that. You understand? I <laughs> mean, I think somebody already find. Do you think that's a, that's a serious right. question? That's so, a serious inquiry? <laughs> depends, that's possible. So but it that's depends on, on their horizon. Mm -hmm. so what them consider short? Are you talking about a year? Like they want it like this. No, no, no. no, no. Like no, if, if they can get a million dollars in one week, they'll take it. I mean, for those people, I think what really needs to be improved from them, um, overall the financial knowledge needs to be improved. Yeah, right. Right. Overall, right. I agree. I agree. But some people who have okay final knowledge, financial knowledge can still expect this, but I think what they have mastered is the psychology aspect. Right. The psychology aspect because, I mean, even looking on trying to earn Anything over two percent per month, that's like out of the walk risky. Right. You know? So I mean that is just a regular investment. Yeah. I mean and two percent sounds like a little but that shows you the magnitude of how challenging this financial world can be and investing can be. Right, right. I mean if you're going out to start your own business, you know, you can more look for these numbers, but for more passive investments, right. going to the bank starting opening an investment account. These things can take time, especially when you want to remain in a certain safety net. Right. And I'm going up choosing like particular stocks which really can go low. Right. Your return is lucrative. Right. But at the same time, you have to understand the psychology. You can't come out and say, oh, listen, I want low risk, but I want big money in the shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So those yeah, those yeah. arguments actually don't coincide in the investment world. Right. You you have to you know, look at it and align your mind. These Obviously, some of these people say this aren't aware of what yields are, are like. Right. So they need to, of course, build up the financial knowledge right. and understand what a risk tolerance means. Right. So that's why it's important to find good financial advisors to... We are not financial advisors, no. by the way. Go <laughs> <laughs> and find good financial advisors. And when I say financial advisors, some people feel like, okay, this is not their knowledge source. You need to do your checks also. You need to understand because the financial advisors can only say, okay, these are the products we have available, and this is what is out there. They really can't tell you that, okay, this is what you need to do. You basically say, okay, this is an option. Yeah, that's what now you, you need to go and do your reading and, and figure it out because, I mean, Nobody can tell you exactly how the market is going to go. They can only tell you what existing information they have in the database. Of course. So that's why extra reading is important. Understanding the history of that you're investing in is important. And understanding what are the pros and cons of it. How long this will take to turn over. How its performance was in the past five years, probably ten. You know, past don't predict future performance. However, it gives you a better guide as to okay how the system works, right. how it moves, right. where, where is it what it moves, where is how, where is it going, mm -hmm. what sort of investments this company has been making. Right. You know? So it can further align with your financial policy for your own self. So what was your experience like um, opening up a job? Mm -hmm. What was required of you mm -hmm. to open this account? Yeah, it relates to credentials. Yeah, oh, alright. So um what you need you need a proof over this. You need um, proof of address, ID, ID, ID. So yeah. with, with the TRN on it, right? So like a driver's license, preferably, right? right. 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 Um, I don't know, proof of address, ID, 
you need a recommendation. You need two recommendations. So from either two existing two clients. That yeah, referrals. referrals. So you need some from either existing clients or a past or just to yeah. piece, all of them there, right? Do, do some brokerages require um, and home employment? Uh, yeah, that's what, that's what I was getting at. You also need a source, source of, of income. Source, source of, of income. income. Source, source, of income. Yeah. Source, source of income. Source of income. And that is where a lot of young people experience issues with exactly. opening accounts. Right. That right. part. Mm -hmm. Everybody will have a greater right part. Right. Source right. of funds. Because some banks won't take them on. Because for the most part, our age, you know, you're, going to, you're probably going to university. Right. 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 Source of income is appearance, but you can't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> some banks have a good relationship, client um, person relationship. So they will actually, some of them can actually say, okay, bring a letter from your parents and they would have to take, like for example, their, uh, let's say they pay it, it, right. and they just say, okay, this is what I'll be giving to my whatever. Some banks will actually say, okay, just get a statement from your savings account, and okay. see mm -hmm. how much you have there. And for the most part, for those banks, it's easier. I won't call any names, but I mean, for my experience, actually, I opened my bank account with Sajikor and JMB. It was pretty easy, yeah, right. pretty straightforward. Yeah. I have other accounts that are bank accounts, but I mean, yeah. it, it, some of them was a little bit more difficult than right. some. Right. Some of them were more stringent, but it's completely understandable because, I mean, people have to understand that at the same time, our, our banks, the, the risk profile of younger people entering the bank, especially with what we see going on here in Jamaica with, you know, crime, scam, right, 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 you know, certain <laughs> issues. I mean, they're very afraid to open. It, it doesn't even matter if you're young. Right. You know, just open an account for someone who literally has no proof of where the income is coming from can be a little bit difficult. So I will be sympathetic for some part, but for the most part, I think there needs to be a system established that, okay, Young people should be able to open accounts very easy and transparent without having to provide. You, you're telling them no, they can't enter because they don't have this, have that. Right. I mean, it's obvious that the regular 18 year old no, is not, not, not going to be able to provide you with exactly. this requirement, exactly. you know? Right, right. But I mean, there are ways to circumvent it. You can go, I mean, prior to, eight, to hitting 18, open an account with your mom, and I think by the time you reach 18, it's really even good for you. Okay. You can also open accounts in trust too, which means that, like, for example, your mom might open an account for you right. before you're 18, and by the time you're 18, it's not redeemable to you. Oh, okay. okay. So there are certain ways to get around that system. Right, right. So what's next for, for 876 Invest? Because a lot, a lot of information has been, you know, passed here. You know, everybody is really sitting and listening to this very keenly, I'm sure, you understand? Because this is the first type of, you know, in-depth, really, investment knowledge that has been, you know. Other than the, 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 the motivational content and the basics, right, this is a bit more in-depth. So how can people go even further with 876 Invest? How can we get, how can we get in contact with you and really have a sit down and say, you know, um, I'm looking to invest, I'm going to take it serious, what do I do? Okay, so we have a website platform that literally allows people to engage and write the name, write the description of the inquiry, and it goes straight to our email, 876.ja at gmail.com. Right? 876.ja at gmail.com. Okay. And the website is 876invest.com. Okay. Right? So literally you go at the bottom of that page, you click engage. And you can just write your name and put your description there. It goes to our email. Also, we have our Instagram page where people daily, daily <laughs> ask us questions and so on. And we follow up and we have a WhatsApp group also. And based off of these people, financial knowledge and how much they can engage, we bring them into this group because sometimes we realize that the initial part, people can be lost because of their level that they're at. So that's basically how we keep in contact with our audience. Right. right. So, um, wrapping up. In wrapping up, you know, I, I'd like to thank the 876 Invest team on behalf of Hustlers JA. It was a very interesting, very, very interesting, interesting interview. Not appreciate you guys taking the time with your busy schedule because I know 
time is money. Yeah. <laughs> Not only as young investors, but you know, as Georgians as well. Definitely. Definitely. You understand? So I really appreciate this. Not only as you know, one young man to another, but as one brother to another. You understand? Yeah, right, right. I appreciate the help. I appreciate taking the time. You know, we, we, we want to hear great things coming from, continuously coming from you to this investment. You know, would happen, will happen, will happen. You understand? That's, there's no nice. doubt. You understand? So, again, gentlemen, thank you for the greeting. Thank you for the legal slapping. You understand? I mean, there's there's one there's before the progress podcast. Right. One last thing that yeah, man. Is, what's new? What's new? You know, we wouldn't like to leave here without dropping certain gems. Right. You know, and yeah. talking about certain yeah. stocks and right. so on, stocks that we like personally. All right, so guys, <laughs> not financial. <laughs> 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 right. We wouldn't want to leave here without talking. Everyone drop some gems, man. Let's hear. I mean, okay. So, our experience so far, everybody know that the COVID had caused, has, had caused the market to tank as low as over 30%. Right, right. That was in the height of the COVID around March, April. Right, right. The market has rebounded somewhat. I mean, it's still in negative territory for the year. However, going forward, one sector that I've seen that has performed admirably so far for the year, and this is highly due to the shifting in consumer demand and also disruption of supply chains across the Caribbean and right. also for some part in Europe and North America. Right. So I'm looking at the manufacturing and distribution sector. So, so far we've seen one stellar company coming up with mind-blowing results so far in during this period and that's separate. I mean, last year people could have noticed that, okay, this company is was tailing behind slightly due to profit constraints. Right, right, right. But if you were to dive deep into this company, you realize that they were during this period of 2019, they had just acquired basic yeah. commodities, they were consolidating their dairy business, and also trying to shed the debt and costs that the sugar industry was bearing. Right, right. They got all this off of the books for 2019, but one thing that stood out to me looking at the results, I mean, we spoke about it. The most important thing is to look on its profits. Right. When you start getting more seasoned investing, you start understanding certain things. One thing that caught my mind from quarter two was separate was that quarter two, three, four, there. You could see that they had very high revenues, but profit was down about 8%, one and a quarter, 7%. 71% increase in revenue. 71 71% increase but no profits <laughs> and when, <laughs> but when the directors were explaining that listen this is what the show was causing and when you looked at the financial sheets you could see that okay there was a huge deficit coming from certain operations and you're like okay this is the sugar operation that they were talking about that was leading them and this is the, the result of the year consolidation shutting down the plants the plants for the television So I said, okay, I'm going to take some opposition and look into it. By this year, we saw these profits 